This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 81. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, found my baby there, stretched out on a long white table, so sweet, so cold, so fast. Thank you for joining me once more, where we take what is on AEindex.org <clears throat> and add a little flair and some context to what you may have read and seen. We're also on social media, Facebook. I'm still hanging in there on <clears throat> Twitter slash X, but mostly just for existing followers. I don't follow anybody anywhere on Twitter. And uh, I just post by, <clears throat> I feel like uh, inertia. I am posting on threads now as well. I, that seems a bit more wonky. Um, it took the uh, Instagram followers from when I did a series of, I did one year of on Instagram. It didn't really do anything for me. So, but uh, yeah, I am posting on threads. So there you go. <clears throat> All right. Already sidetracked. Let's, well, this month we've got a lot of solicitations, <clears throat> but let's start with Old Reliable, the August <coughs> AE Index poll. And the poll for this month was, since the 1970s, comic book creatives who have become fan favorites working for one of the big companies have struck out on, on their own creating universes without superheroes. The audience didn't always follow these creatives from the titles that made them famous. Which one of these would you like to see get? Would you like to see get an AE format book? I think I... <coughs> So then it's which creator-owned property deserves the AE treatment. So we had leading the poll, I guess this is no surprise, Monkey Man and O'Brien by Art Adams, <laughs> 34 votes. Followed closely by Sabre by Paul Glacey, 24 votes. That's who I voted for. Leave the Chance by Paul Smith, 16 votes. 11 votes for Next Men by John Byrne, and 10 votes for Dread Star by Jim Starlin. I honestly thought Starlin would rank higher. These are all great creators. And any of these projects would be wonderful to see get an AE format book. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd be completely happy with getting any of these. So <clears throat> good poll. Another uh, poll by a friend of the site, Alex Sheikman, <clears throat> from the uh, Marvel Masters forums. All right, let's talk about those solicitations. So we had uh, IDW came out with a solicitation. Image had a solicitation, which is big news to me. I thought, wow, that's uh, was surprised to see something. And then Fantagraphics through Diamond has finally <clears throat> solicited something we'd heard about previously. So let's go with IDW. IDW mm. EC covers Artisan Edition. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got something stuck in my throat. EC covers Artisan Edition is the it's it's the Artist Edition in an EC format. I mean, that's what the Artisan Edition format um, is. Mainly at this point. I'll give you the word anyways. Here is your chance to collect some of the most iconic comic book covers by some of the greatest artists to ever pick up a pencil. EC Comics, under the guidance of publisher Bill Gaines, was, according to the editor of this collection, <laughs> it's funny, the greatest line of comics ever done. This once-in-a-lifetime artist edition collects more than 140 EC covers by their best and brightest talents. The luminaries included in this tomb include Wally Wood, Harvey Kurtzman, Graham Ingalls, Al Williamson, Johnny Craig, Frank Frazetta, Jack Davis, Al Feldstein, and more. To make a baseball analogy, this is a murderer's row every bit as noteworthy as the 27 Yankees. Also includes introduction by noted DC scholar Tommy Burns. To date, IDW Publishing has won six Eisner Awards. Each cover in this collection has been scanned from the original art. While appearing to be in black and white, these images were scanned in color, enabling the reader to see all the subtle nuances that make the original art unique. Blue pencil notations, zip tone duo shade, whiteout, all of these are, and more are clearly visible. Honestly, the only better to see these covers is to be holding the original art in your hands. I took out a reference in the uh, in the solicitation and said it was 15 by 22 because this solicitation was copy and pasted from the artist edition. That's why it actually says this once in a lifetime artist edition. Uh, I didn't feel like cleaning up the whole thing. It's 8 by 12, 160 pages soft cover. It's going to be 39.99 US, so that's following the standard format for artisan editions. Should be French flaps and a very nice looking book. Second book from... IDW announced, or solicited, I'm sorry, not announced, was John Romita's The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2 Artisan Edition. Jazzy Johnny Craig was 
for many, the definitive artist on The Amazing Spider-Man. His sleek line work brought the web slinger to life for a generation of fans. This volume collects issues 106, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, and 115. Or 106 and 108 to 115 in their entirety. Additionally, this is a beautiful gallery section of Remita Extras. Like all of IDW's award-winning artist edition style books, each page has been painstakingly scanned from the original art to ensure the finest possible reproduction. Mimicking the experience of seeing Romita's hand-drawn pages, it's the next best thing to owning the art. While appearing to be in black and white, each page was scanned in color to mimic as closely as possible the experience of viewing the actual original art. For instance, corrections, blue pencils, pasteovers, all the little nuances that make original art unique. Solicited for April 30th. I'm sorry, I did not mention the previous book was solicited for April 2nd. 8 by 12, 208 pages, soft cover, thirty nine ninety nine. Now, this is a little bit different because the last time they had a book over 200 pages as an artisan edition, which was Daredevil, Born Again, uh, it was forty nine ninety nine. That's the only aberration in the soft cover artisan edition. So this one is sticking with 39. So that's nice to see. No fluctuations. So two artisan editions. Right? Taking the artist edition and shrinking it down in 8x12 format, soft cover with French flaps, which French flaps are great. Keep the book very sturdy, gives the soft cover some rigidity. So, great book. All right, image solicitations. This was, uh, we have a new image vault edition, which is very exciting. Very little info, though. Pretty Deadly, The Shrike, Vault Edition. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of Pretty Deadly, Emma Rios has opened her personal vault and is sharing the first five issues of Pretty Deadly in their original detailed artboard scale. Collect Pretty Deadly 1 to 5. It's solicited for November 29th, 2023. It's 12 and a quarter by 17 and a quarter inches, 144 pages, hardcover, 125 US. A couple exciting things about that. Uh, One, we're getting a new vault edition, which is great. Uh, That price point is quite low. And it's coming from Image, where basically an Image, the creators have to do it themselves and sort of give it to Image and then Image publishes for them. So that's exciting. I'm watching anxiously for more info from that, maybe something from the creators. Uh, Very interesting. And the last thing was Diamond put out the previews. And we, even though we've seen it in the catalog, in the winter catalog, we now get Fantagraphics book, and that is Bill Ward Fantagraphics Studio Edition. <clears throat> this blurb is too long. I'm not reading it. Yeah, it just goes on and on about Bill Ward. It really doesn't. Um, it doesn't say anything about the book. Here we go. Let me get to the part of the book. The majority of the images in this volume were drawn between 1955 and 65 when Ward was at the height of his skill. They have been scanned in super high resolution from original art and reproduced to highlight every sheen and accentuate every curve to its fullest. The book not only reproduces more than 150 of Ward's most beautifully rendered illustrations, but also serves as a time capsule to a more innocent moment in pop culture when these images were shocking. So the publication date is January 3rd. It's 13 and a half by 17 inches, 180 pages, hardcover, 175 U.S. Available <clears throat> anywhere books are found. Really, Fantagraphics does a good job of distribution. Uh, it is available from Thinkspin of the World and Amazon. I've got the links <clears throat> up there. Um, we now get the final cover as opposed to the preliminary cover that was posted in the catalog. And this final cover is much nicer. It's got a, it's got that great, um, it's got a great Fantagraphics Studio Edition feel to it. Really well done. All right, those are our solicitations. Let's go to shipping changes. While we're at it, um, <coughs> excuse me. Unfortunately, uh, the 2080 art of Kevin O'Neill Apex Edition has is been placed on to be determined because it did not hit its date, and Diamond has no replacement date yet, so it's to be determined. And everything, sh- everything else, kind of shifted. So Walter Simonson's Fantastic Four Hours Edition is now uh, October third. Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and uh, Assassin's Artis- Artisan Edition is October 10th. John Byrne's X-Men Artist Edition is November 14th. So we got some shifts <clears throat> along the schedule as well there. But good things coming. All right, let's talk 
out of print sales. So I've been trying to keep this list updated. I feel like part of me feels I should just have every book on here and I should just check every book on eBay. But at times that seems silly. All right. <clears throat> this is AE format out of print sales, July, 2023. So in August, I look back at the previous month on eBay and I see what books sold and what's the average selling price. So one copy of Basil Wolverson's World Worlds Artists Edition sold for 150. One copy of Batman The Dark Knight Returns Frank Miller Gower Edition sold for 120. That's a precipitous drop in the number of editions that have been available selling lately. Four copies of Bernie Wright's and Artifact Edition Second Print, averaging 126.25. One copy of Best of EC Comics Volume 1 Artist Edition, 299.99. And Volume 2, one copy for 299.99. Two copies of Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassin's Artifact Edition, selling for an average of three ninety nine ninety nine. Oof. One copy of David Mazzucchelli's Dare of Warning and Artist Edition sold for three seventy five. See, that's why my copy for three fifty, I think, I'm on the uh, A Index store is a deal. One copy of Don Rose's The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. One hundred two fifty. One copy of Jaime Hernandez Studio Edition two sixty five. That's a recent addition to this list. It's been out of print for a while, but I just didn't notice. Sadly. Sorry. One copy of Frank Miller's Sin City, The Hard Goodbye Curator's Collection for one thirty fifty. Two copies of Gene Colan's Tomb of Dracula for three sixty average. Two copies of Gil Kane's Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition, averaging one nineteen twenty four. Two copies of Jack Davis's EC Stories, averaging two hundred five twenty five. One copy of Jack Kirby Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth for one twenty four ninety nine. One copy of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four, the world's greatest artist edition, for three fifteen. This book really goes has its ups and downs. I'm surprised to see, but then it got to three fifteen again. I mean, it it, it oof, it's a twice up. It, it's worth it. Two copies of Jack Kirby's Marvel Heroes and Monsters for two twenty two forty seven average. Two copies of Jim Lee DC Legends, averaging one sixty seven forty nine. One copy of Jim Starlin's Marvel Cosmic for one fifty. Two copies of Joe Kubert's Tarzan of the Apes, averaging 83. I don't understand why this book is selling so low all the time. <clears throat> That's below cover, and it's a really early... It's a 2012 book. I think it was 100 cover, maybe 125. That is great. These three Joe Kubert Tarzans are so awesome. Real, You would get a real appreciation of Joe Kubert on the, when, when, in those three volumes. John Burns, Fantastic Four, aver- three copies, averaging 195, 19. Two copies of John Burns' Marvel Classics, averaging 89, 97. Two copies of John Ramesses' The Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition, Volume 2, <clears throat> averaging 169, 99. Two copies of Judge Dredd by Brian Boland, Apex Edition, averaging 382, 48. One copy of Lone Wolf and Cub, Gallery Edition, 138, 83. <clears throat> Three copies of Man Artist Edition, uh, averaging one thirty nine. One copy of Marvel Covers Artist Edition, f- first print for one fifty nine ninety nine. One copy of Mike Mignola's Hellboy and Hell and Other Stories, first print one eighty two fifty. One copy of Mike Mignola's The Amazing Screw on Head and Other Curious Objects, one twenty nine ninety nine. Two copies of P. Craig Russell's Strange Dreams for one twenty nine ninety eight average. One copy of Robocop vs. the Terminator Gallery Edition for one seventy six thirty. Two copies of Ross Andrews' The Amazing Spider-Man, averaging one thirty four ninety nine. One copy of Spawn Vault Edition for three fifty five. One copy of Star Wars Artifact Edition for seventy nine ninety nine. One copy of Strength of a Free Agent of Shield, first print for one seventy four ninety nine, and one copy of the second print for one seventy five. So there you go. The second print got a penny more. Maybe they like the color change on the cover better. Two copies of Terry Moore Strangers in Paradise. Averaging one twenty four ninety nine. One copy of the Prisoner Original Art Edition for sixty five. One copy of Usagi Jimbo Samurai and Other Stories for one twenty. That's the lowest I've seen that book sell in a long time. Two copies of Usagi Jimbo the Artist and Other Stories Gallery Edition, averaging three fifty nine sixty five. It's great to see that this some copies have surfaced and that they're available. And it's another very hard to find book. One copy of Walter Simonson's Star Wars Artist Edition for one hundred nine ninety nine. One copy of Walter Simonson's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition, second print for eighty nine ninety nine. One copy of Will Eisner's The Spirit Artist Edition for two twenty five. <clears throat> if we look through for record breaking prices, we had one record breaker this month, 
And that was Gene Colan's Tomb of Dracula Artist Edition. One, sold, one copy sold for $500 on July 7th. So that's the high price I've seen for this book. Continues to be a very in-demand book. Uh, not a lot of these books we've seen you know, have ever even come close to the craziness of pricing we saw in 2021. But, wow. That's, uh, that's new items adding to my highest you know, price chart every month. Okay. Um, let's talk reviews. I, before I do that, though, I should mention uh, three ways you can help support the site. Which I do every podcast, and I I appreciate it if you if you listen through the spiel. Um, one is to use the links I have on any time you look at a book, a solicitation, a review. I have order online links, and generally, I'd say ninety percent of the time, those are affiliate links, so I get a percentage of that one percent, maybe two percent from Amazon, up to I think ten percent from share of sale. So it's pretty great, and uh, that's things from other world. So. If you can order the book anyways and you use one of my links, it, it helps me out. I, I love that and appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, the next best way is to buy something from the store. I just added a ton of things to the store. So that's at aeindex.org slash store. Uh, I've removed, I was charging 4% processing fee to handle shipping materials, um, PayPal fees, that kind of thing. I removed that. So there, things are a little bit cheaper. And I've added a bunch of books. And I've... I base the pricing on those eBay charts, and if I see they're floating around, uh, or if they're not on the chart, then I will put them a little bit below cover if it's a book that's, you know, out there a while. So, all right. And the third way to support me is through Patreon. Uh, that's uh, a dollar or more, or whatever local currency you're in, just goes towards me buying more books. All this, any money I bring in for the site goes towards buying more books. That's that's the reality of it. All right. Thanks for listening to that. Two reviews this month. I'm still trying to keep on my two review list. You're probably wondering to yourself, well, Michael Golden's Marvel Stories, that came out this month. Why don't you have a review? Um, the copy, I'm still waiting for my copy in the mail. Uh, if it doesn't show up soon, I'm probably going to order a local copy through a local comic shop and then put the book that arrives in the mail for sale on the website. So we'll see. All right. But that, uh, yeah, so I'll give it, I'll give it until September and then I'll probably have to order a copy from my local comic shop. All right. Buck Denny, Contra Lady X artist edition for the first Time the original pages and color indications of the mythical Buck Danny against Lady X are reproduced in facsimile in the original format. Buck Danny against Lady X was pre-published in Spiru from February to August 1956 and appeared as an album in 1958. This is the first meeting between the athletic aviator and Lady X, who will become his favorite adversary. This was released by Dupuis on June 2nd. It took um, it took a month for me to get it from France. And then I sat on it a bit, but I need... Yeah, this. All right, it's 18 inches by 24 inches. This is the largest uh, AE format book I have. It's actually a bit larger than the Prince Viant, so it's a big book. 104 pages, hardcover. It was 250 euros. Ouch. Yeah, this is... Uh, wow, I'm loving uh, Dupuis, what they're doing with their Artiste Edition. <clears throat> they are really nice books. And uh, again, I ordered this from Amazon, and uh, I did that because this book comes in its cardboard case shrink-wrapped, and then it comes in a shipping box from Dupuis shrink-wrapped, and then Amazon puts that in a box and ships it. So even though Amazon puts no packing around the book in the box, even though it's coming from France, so this is classic Amazon, it's still arriving in my house in perfect condition. Even the outside, the two shipping boxes look good, so this was a good... And, um, wow, it's such a great book. Yes, I love how what they do. First off, I, I'm, you know, I'm constantly talking about uh, if I did my own artist edition, which I still plan on doing. And uh, this cover design, I love the, uh, the cloth spine, the hot stamping, the hot stamp cloth spine, and then the large image for the back and front cover. That just looks so great. And I, uh, the text, it really reminds me of the same sort of thing we see from the uh, Angelem Press books, the Nifium books, they're so gorgeous. 
And I love that same style. It's so clean looking. And then when you get in there, it's, you know, they always have some, they always have a bit of, um, uh, biographical answer ancillary material telling you about the book or the creators of the story building something up with a little artifacts and then uh you know blow-ups of art and then you get into the again you get into the actual story uh i this is a european thing that i don't i'm not sure i can wrap my head around and that's putting um the color guide on the next page behind the art. So you get the original art on the right. And then when you flip the page over, it's the color guide. So I guess if like, if I, I held it up to the light, like coming in from my window and I could actually see the color come through the page, but otherwise I don't know what you'd want to do with that color guide. I know they're, they're including everything they have. That's still original from this material. I mean, this is, this was published years, right? That we just, what was the years on these? It's 50, this was started being published in 56 in serialization in Spirou magazine and here to, you know, and, uh, as an album in 58 and here they still have it. Everything except one page. So the absolute last page of the story is not here, but even then they've got a scan of the original art and they, uh, they blew it up. It doesn't look as good. I have it's in the review, but still they did their best. And then the blow, I mean, the enlargements in this book are amazing. First off, the, the check out those enlargements in the cover on the back cover. I mean, they're gorgeous. And then uh, there's this two-page spread of one panel, and it, the detail is amazing. And just uh, the uh, the work there, blowing that up and editing it, just amazing. Yeah, I mean, you've got the cover for the album in this, and the you know uh, Huberman, his artwork is uh, there's a certain it's got a, a feel and a look to it, not so much as other. French work at the time, I'd say it's got a bit, oh jeez, it's got a bit of an American feel to it in its um, sort of like a Terry and the Pirate, Steve Canyon sort of vibe, maybe a Steve Canyon vibe, but to not, not to that extent, um, I mean this is, take a look at the review, um, watch the video where I flip through the book and really drink it in, this is if, uh, if you're not picking up foreign language books and um wow you were i can't say enough about this book and i haven't really said much other than wow it's great it's great wow and i apologize for that uh in the review just of a note i've started uh, i've got i'm going back to my reviews i'm going through all of them editing out the order on lines because a lot of things have changed uh, no longer available from places it's a lot of the books now are only available from ebay but i'm also adding a um i'm adding a slideshow at the top of every review now so if you want to come into the if you want to come into the review and you want to just you know you just on your phone or tablet you can just swipe through otherwise on a pc or you just click through so you can see all the if you want to see all the images that way or you the traditional way i have the scrolling and then at the bottom i have a video and i apologize uh, last month i said to everybody excuse me in the podcast that i would try for a video review i just didn't get it done I'm still debating format. How am I going to do it? What's what's the deal with that? So, still working on that. Second review this month, uh, La Nascita de Corto Maltese, which is the birth of Corto Maltese. Hugo Pratt and the magazine Sergeant Kirk. Uh, I was on Los Garabeo <clears throat> earlier in August because somebody mentioned that um, some Diabolique books are, uh, which were these, they were small paperbacks, uh, illustrated paperbacks, like, uh, comics, but in paperback form in Italy. And, uh, there were some like artist edition, AE format style books. So I was on the website for that. And then I noticed that they had some other ones that I didn't have. Los Garbios, the one who <clears throat> did some, I have one Los Garbio book before. And what was the name of that book? Uh, hold on. Morbus Gravis by Paolo Serpieri. That's it. I'm drawing a blank this morning on a lot of things. I apologize. That book was awesome. The reviews on the site. It's gorgeous. I thought it was out of print and long gone, but you can get it from Los Garbio's website. So this this book also is on Los Garbio. It's the same format. So it's 30 by 41 centimeters. And uh, which is 12 by, what is it, 18? It's a good size. 
And it's nice to see that Los Garbillos producing their sort of art edition style books all the same size. Because I also picked up a second one that I'll be reviewing next month. So in total, I picked up four books from Los Garbillo. Um, they did great shipping with FedEx. And uh, got this book. I had seen it on the site. I had actually bought three other books and I was just flipping through. And uh, then I noticed this one. I thought, oh, okay, I'll give this one a try. A limited edition of only 500 copies on Corto Maltese's debut in the pages of Sergeant Kirk, the magazine published by Editor Evaldi, where Pratt sort of started his professional work. Rich illustrated with Pratt's watercolors and includes photos and curiosities from his youth and narrates the meeting between Florenzi Evaldi from Genoa and Hugo Pratt from Venice. Text in Italian, English, and Spanish. Introduction by Claudio Del Orso. From Los Garbillo, it was published in October 2020. 30 by 41 centimeters, 80 pages, hardcover, 75 euros. You can get it from Amazon or uh, I have this on the store. Um, I got two copies of this. One was a bumped copy and that's the bottom corner. The bottom right corner is bumped. So that means it got sort of, well, it looks like somebody dropped it or it hit something and the, uh, the cover has been smushed in. So rightfully so then i put it i put it it's up on the store for 50 us if you're interested uh to check out the review and then if you don't mind a bumped copy for a hefty discount then you should order that <clears throat> okay so this is in fact it's an interesting book so first half is this is the text from these three people uh talking about Corto Maltese, it's not, um, mostly about Hugo Pratt and him coming to Sergeant Kirk magazine, which is interesting. Uh, the Colson page gives all the info. My copy, it's stamped. Uh, this is numbered 101. It's a limited numbered edition, as I mentioned earlier. So was the previous book that I talked about, uh, Buck Danny. Uh, that was uh, 600 copies, I think. And that's hot. That's stamped as well on the inside. I forgot to mention that because I am scatterbrained uh, for this podcast. All right. So you got text. You got a lot of text at the beginning, but then there's a, just a ton of art and watercolors and photos of Hugo Pratt, if you may have not seen. And these are reproduced really well. Uh, the scans are gorgeous, and all stuff I never, I never seen before. I, you know, my limited exposure to Italian comics is even less than my exposure to French comics, which I've really had to work at to expose myself to. And, um, so Sergeant Kirk, uh, Pratt's doing some great stuff. And this is where he actually started the Ballad of the Salty Sea, which is probably his most famous, uh, Corto Maltese story. So the book, yeah, it's a lot of text and then illustrations. Uh, he does character designs really nicely. And this is, this Sergeant Kirk felt like, a, as far as I can tell, it's a military magazine, military stories. So it goes all over the place, you know, wild west and all over the world, and it, Great stuff, historical. And then uh, the second half of the book features a, uh, you know one of Pratt's covers on the right side, and then just a, you know your your information on a clean white page on the left side. So it's very busy in the first half, and then the second half is very focused on the art and the uh, Pratt's cover layouts are just really nice. And then to see his watercolors, I just I was really impressed. I'm so used to knowing Pratt from his black and white work, Cordo Maltese. And then I picked up some other stuff, some of the stuff he did for British magazines. Again, black and white, but its watercolors are so uh, inviting. And uh, like I said, the cover composition is wonderful. And then he does historic stuff. It's just so great. This uh, I was really surprised by this book at the variety of material. If you're a, if you're a Pratt fan, this is definitely something to pick up. Uh, actually, a lot of the, <clears throat> as is the next book that I'll be reviewing next month. Uh, it's a t uh, it's another Pratt book, uh, and it does the same thing as these other, which I keep finding, where it's got the pencils and inks on the right side, and then on the, when you flip the page, it's got the color guide. So, anyway, that's it for this month. Thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll talk again next time. Let her go, let her go, God bless her, wherever she may be. Da, da, da. She can search this wide world over She'll never find a sweet man like me